We are thrilled to have right here on the Rich Eisen Show in studio the man who plays Ferrari himself in the new film Ferrari that's available in theaters nationwide on Christmas Day. Another fantastic movie directed by Michael Mann and in it, the actor Adam Driver here on the Rich Eisen Show. Great to see you, sir. Yeah, thank you very, very much for having me. Dude, you're great in this movie. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. How do you, you. How do you? How do you get into the this role? I mean, it seemed like you transformed yourself. Clearly, uh, how did you prepare and get into this role for Ferrari? A, a lot. A lot of it winds up being kind of by osmosis. You know, we shot it all in Modena, and we're there a month before it started, and the prosthetics. And Michael is had. Uh, he's very much into internal life. He so for him, the key to the character was someone who the mentality of a racer, someone who is you know, pro, myopic focus for a prolonged amount of time. So we raced a lot of cars in California or here uh, in Modena. And, you know, when we we're shooting with just the chassis of the cars that we used in the movie that were, weren't, uh, didn't have shells on them yet. So yeah. that's, that's the, the, the cars that we see in the, in the film. Is yeah. What you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Some, some of them are the real deal, which were, you know, shipped with you know, security guards. About to say, yeah. Did you get behind the wheel of one of those? No, 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 no. No, they, there's like a guy that stands up behind cones and just like, you know, keep keep moving. Keep <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Michael, he's, he's, he's like that. He'll ship a car from, he shipped to one of the Maseratis and, you know, strapped nine uh, microphones to it and took it through a tunnel because he just, just for the sound. It's never in the movie, but the sound of it is not going to be, <laughs> just, just for the sound because you can't duplicate it. So he, he's he's a relentless in his kind of quest for it being authentic. And right. then just by being there in the place, you uh, it, it just kind of naturally happens. Right. It's it's kind of like going to a a, a a different country, adjusting to a time zone of a different country. You 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 go to London or and you're all, all messed up for a couple of days, and then just just naturally you start adjusting to the time. It's the same same thing with playing a character for like that for 14 hours a day for months. You well, w- Without thinking about it, you naturally just start to... Well, the neat thing is there's a source material. There's a book yeah, on yeah. which this film is based. Enzo Ferrari, The Man, The Cars, The Races, The Machine by Brock Yates. I imagine you devour Read that, that book, correct? Yeah. Piero Ferrari, who's in the movie as a, as a kid, was right. b- opened the doors literally to Enzo's house and Enzo, you know... His brief, he was in his office and opened up a briefcase that he hadn't even seen. So we're watching him watch, you know, open his father's briefcase and going through all of his stuff. How do you keep from wanting to, you know, not want to dive into it yourself, right? I mean, you oh yeah, you, you, yeah. He showed all the ties, all of everything that he wore. The 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 barber shop that's in the movie is the actual barber shop where he got his hair cut. The guy who's cutting his hair is the grandson of the guy who actually cut his hair. <laughs> wow. The ma- the crash at the end of the movie is where the crash is. That is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without giving it too much, I know because it was. Yeah, the, there's a, such a it's a jarring finish straight yeah. up, like, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the way it builds and the way that everything's going and 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 the film again um, is about Ferrari's life and at this very specific moment in time. So um, and there there are some thrilling race moments, but this is really a story about Enzo Ferrari, who he is, his family life, how it made him who he was, right. and what happened at this very important moment in the mid fifties. Yeah, in his it's, life. It's a very character driven film. If if it's not, if people are expecting it to be just nonstop racing with no, with a very weak, you know, uh, plot, it's not that. It's very much about him at a, you know. The death rate, I think, of his drivers in the late 50s, like 55 to 57, something like 50 percent. And uh, his business, uh, also the racing world was changing. It was uh, suddenly television was coming in and how uh, he, his business was going under because he was more interested in racing than he was selling commercial vehicles. And then uh, personally, his uh, his wife, you know, they lost a son and their relationship was very business oriented and they, he had a... Uh, a son with another woman named Lena Lardi. And, and that's he Piero. Was, yeah, right. And that's Piero. And he was, um, you know, do I take the name uh, Lardi or, or Ferrari? So, But then uh, Michael's key into that is someone who's a racer, who who is calm on the surface, but kind of furiously paddling underneath and has to stay, you know, at least project an image of um, control, you know, as as racers uh, do. They they're have to... St- are aware of every everything around them in a way you become, you know, hyper focused. So uh, Adam Driver here on the Rich Eisen show again. Ferrari in theaters nationwide on Christmas Day. 
what do you, knowing Ferrari obviously is as well as you 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 must. What do you think Enzo Ferrari would think of what Formula One looks like right now? What do you think? Oh, you would say about that? I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not so keyed into what Formula One is now. Well, it's just it's as commercial huge, as huge as it gets right now. Right. I mean, right, it right. is an international sport that is on par with everything else right now that everybody wants to see and watch. Right, Certainly right. now, even in America right now. Right. So I, I guess, you know, what would he think, I, I guess, of something that is so significant in the racing world when he was involved in a race that, that went so poorly for him, I guess. Uh, right. Well, I guess, I mean, you would ask Enzo what, what was his favorite car was, and he would always be the, <laughs> it'd always be the next one was the answer. And you go to the factory, because I went to the Ferrari factory, and yes. you watch them make these cars, yes. and I was expecting it to be like a... Um, you know, I, I don't know. People, it's just one guy's job is to pull some heavy thing down and like steam comes out and it's, you know, but it, right. but it, it looks like a science lab. You know, there are people in white coats just it's immaculate. Go, go, yeah, you're going over a, a small detail, you know, for it, it feels like you were walking into, yeah, like a science lab. It doesn't feel like any, any greasy or, you know, messy. It's it's very clinical. There's nobody going underneath, you know, underneath no. the car right now to no, check no, on no. the carburetor. Or no, no, no. It's you know, I love it's a, that. a bunch of people in lab coats. So then, what'd you learn about him? What'd you learn about him when it's all said and done about Enzo Ferrari? Adam? Well, uh, kind of, uh, uh, and there's uh, well, a lot of people had their own versions of who he was, but mm-hmm. I, I really like the idea that he was very aware of his image and uh, played up to it, mm-hmm. and. Uh, he kind of embodies something that I aspire to in life. I feel like when things are um, bad for me, I kind of let everybody around me know it. Yes. But but he was very contained and calm under pressure. And and this is all pre psychology, so he's not he's not uh, also self analytical. He <laughs> he is uh, instinctual and all about moving forward and doesn't second guess impulses. You know, Adam Driver here on the Rich Eisen show. You got a good. Um Michael Mann story you want to share? What do you got for me? Yeah, my, fa- my favorite Michael Mann story actually was, I have lots of them, but okay. th- my favorite one that kind of, uh, for me, uh, uh, it says who Michael was, we were in pre-production for this, uh, for Ferrari, and we were here, and we were going to go do a makeup test in some factory somewhere, mm-hmm. and Michael likes to get in the car with you, which I didn't know. He likes to ride in the car, so he can talk to you and, and you know, talk on the phone and like kill a lot of birds with a lot of stones, and... Uh, he wanted to get coffee, and he was like, do you want coffee? So we pulled over to the side of the road at this 7-Eleven, and we got a coffee. We get back in the car. Th- this will get good. And, no, no, and, I, I, am, <laughs> I am completely locked in. I'm completely and locked we, in. We get on the highway, and he's like, oh, I left, I left my uh, my wallet back in the 7-Eleven. So mm-hmm. there's like a, a local road on the side. So we, we get off, and we go back to this like really busy intersection. It's mm-hmm. like... Three lanes here divided by a median, three lanes going the opposite direction. It's repeated on all four sides. Yes. And we were we pulled up to the stoplight for maybe 10 seconds. And Michael's in the back with me, and he just, uh, he's like, I'll be right back. Opens the door, runs across the lane of traffic to the left, jumps over the median, runs across three lanes of oncoming traffic, runs uh, uh, in the parking lot into the 7-Eleven, and disappears in the door. I can't remember if the door of our car was open or closed, but for the sake of the story, I'll just say it was open. And uh, me and the driver are kind of like, what, uh, fucking... Or, uh, so then the the light has still uh, not turned green. And uh, then, then b- before it turns green, Michael comes busting back out, running across the parking lot, uh, th- again across three lanes of traffic, jumps over the median, another lane of traffic, gets in our car. And then you would think you would then go left yeah. when it turns left when the light actually does, but then tried to convince the driver to go cross over two lanes of traffic to get back on the highway because he didn't want to waste any more time because he uh, because we had to make it to this makeup test. So that, that That's my goal okay. in a nutshell. I have one follow-up, if you yeah, don't yeah, mind, yeah. Adam Driver. Yeah, yeah. Did he have a slushie in his hand? No, like, what, no. What, what, what did he no. come out of 7-Eleven with? with? With his wallet. Okay. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You want, you know, want a taquito it, or a hot dog? I just don't know. You know no, no, no. Yeah, he just wanted a coffee. And that, the, the coffee was still in the car. He just wanted to go get his wallet because he left it there. Understood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. Okay. Just but, didn't know if he came back with anything else. No, no, no. <laughs> My God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah My and oddly, God. there's 700 duck bucks in cash. <laughs> yeah. He robbed it. He robbed the 7 Eleven. He came out. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Um, he turned I, into Neil McCauley and Heat. He, I love that. <laughs> Ferrari again in theaters nationwide on Christmas Day. Uh, everyone should go see it. It is awesome. Awesome. The cat.
cast is unbelievable. Penelope Cruz, Shailene Woodley, Patrick Dempsey, just to name three along with you, Adam Driver. Uh, when we have somebody of your stature with a significant filmography and career, we have a, se a segment called Celebrity True or False about uh, your career. Okay. We wish to know if these are actually true facts that we've seen online and about written about you or if they're false, if you don't okay. mind. Sure, okay, sure. and we, we actually have a great production value to go with it. Please hit it <laughs> for Adam Driver. Celebrity true or false. You can't handle the truth. There you go. That's it. <laughs> great, that's great, great, yeah, yeah. Again, I know you did just did SNL, so you you appreciate great production value. Yeah, a few for good a fourth men. time. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, all right. First up, Adam Driver. True or false? You spent your first big acting paycheck from Law and Order on a pair of Air Jordans. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. first of all, uh, who were you in this Law and Order? Um, I was, I think the character's name was Will Slansky. I, I did it I kind of twi yeah, oh, yeah, is, that, yeah. is that Will right there on I the screen? I think so. Okay. I think so. I did, I did the, the Mothership one. Okay. And then the SVU. I both uh, played creeps. That's my, <laughs> that was my name. Okay. All right. It still is. All right. Yeah. And do we know, uh, what was the, what was the, uh, what was the pair of Air Jordans? What I was can, uh, uh, no, I don't know the name of them. I still okay. have them in my closet. You do? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah and right. I don't wear them. Uh, they, they are uh, very dusty. They have like a kind of like a clear plastic panel on the back part of the shoe and it's okay. kind of like filled with dust and, okay. uh, and I don't clean them and I don't wear them. So then why, why Air Jordans? You just wanted Cause them? I always wanted a pair when I was a kid and we couldn't afford them. So, and I would, I had one pair of Nikes that I got at a garage sale. This is in Indiana, uh -huh. this is a small Mishawaka, Indiana, but, but, but we couldn't afford Air Jordans. So when I could actually, when I actually had money. Uh, that was the first thing I wanted to get. To me, that symbolized, you know. Like, Man, I respect that. Were you a Jordan I fan? Oh, yeah, yeah, massively. Yeah. But it was like the late 90s. I was, should have been a Pacers fan, but because we were a little closer. Well, because Jordan was Jordan. So, so I, you know, so all, all of, uh, that was my, he was, he was my, uh, my childhood. So Jordan hero. over Reggie Miller is what you're saying at yeah, the time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You even I shouldn't you, you say that. No, it's okay. You yeah. made the face. You, no, which no, is good I, enough. You made the nod towards the <laughs> yeah, Indiana. No, I know what's coming. Yeah, Indiana, yeah. Indiana fan. Yeah. yeah. But are, are you wearing Jordans right now? Yeah, it, yeah, I am. It was the first yeah. thing that we talked about when he came out. Yeah. yeah. Was, okay. So. Yeah. No. And I, do you no, remember I, what year this was? Maybe we can pinpoint what Jordans you bought. Yeah. What do, year was this? Mm -hmm. year? No, no, no. What, whatever year that was. Whatever. Whenever he was Will the Creep right, on Law yeah. and Order. We're, we're okay. But I didn't even know they were like you know Air Ones. Like I didn't know anything about. You know, the, I just knew that I went and bought the first pair of Jordans that look like. And and they're still in your closet. Still in my closet. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a picture. I, I, I would, I would, we'd, we'd appreciate <laughs> that. We'll take it. All right. Uh, second uh, item, Adam Driver. True or false? You landed girls thanks to spontaneously licking Lena Dunham's arm during the audition. True or false? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Apparently, you know, you don't remember your. I, I would imagine you I remember. I licked a that. lot of people. <laughs> in that, right there. I had the Jordans. I was feeling very confident. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So that's. I, I, yeah, I don't I we've ever had a, a, a pass yeah, like, before. Yeah, either it's true or false. But yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's if that's what she said. Then okay. Apparently, but okay. that's not. Well, I don't remember. Like I, I, I got it. You know, I, <laughs> I licked her. I know that was a. Okay. I don't enough. even remember licking her. I, okay. I at all her. the arm or anything like that. No, I mean yeah. Okay. If you, right. No, I mean I probably did at some point. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, you got the role. Yeah. And yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. led it's to a confusing time. It's, you know. led, it's led to a few things. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. All right. Uh, next up, true or false. False. Before filming Patterson, you got a commercial driver's license so you could legally drive a city bus while filming in Patterson, New Jersey. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So you went through training for it or something? Yeah, like that? They, actually, oddly enough, there was a, a, a driving school in Queens, I think, called the Ferrari Driving School. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I, I just put that together. Yeah, I have a, the certificate for it and everything. So, what? So you you went to Ferrari driving school? Yes, yeah, to yeah. learn how to operate a city bus. Yeah, but it wasn't like Ferrari Ferrari. It was just it was just like it was probably just a guy was, named Ferrari Ferrari with one R. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gus Ferrari. Yeah. It's yeah. Gus's it's Tom bus. Ferrari's driving Tom school. Fer there, there Tommy people. Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, the, the, the dumber brother, you know. So you went through the process. Of yeah, that? I knew that we were going to be shooting this movie, and I, I, I didn't want it to get to the part where suddenly Jim Jarmusch, who yes. directed the movie, was limited by shots that we could do, and by its schedule, by you know, suddenly having to compromise and getting a stunt driver. So I'm like, well, if I get my license 
and I know there was a lot of scenes where I'm driving. I didn't want to think about the mechanical parts of it. I feel yes. like I should know that stuff because he would know that stuff, and, not, and then I can be a, you know open to actually act and not not look like I was just kind of making it up. I feel sure. like those people have such a rhythm, and I, I needed to know that rhythm. And the only way to do it was in my mind was to get a commercial. You know, was to get a bus license. Is it is it like? Getting your driver's license, where you somebody got in and, yeah. and you had to go through a test drive oh, yeah, with yeah, somebody. Yeah. And a really angry guy was really so mad at me. Even the, <laughs> even the guy before gave me like an advice about like because uh, you have to you know, it's very specific about crossing train tracks, and he he gave me the wrong information. Oh, boy. I, and the guy almost lost it on me, but I passed. Like I, I I did it. That's pressure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's it's uh, it's tough in New York to drive around or uh, to get your license in a bus is. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was intense. I love it. Ferrari. That's you went cool. to a place called Ferrari for that. Yeah. All right, two more, Adam Driver. True or false? You turned down an invitation from Mark Hamill to hang out while shooting The Last Jedi because you didn't want to break character of Kylo Ren. False. I'm so glad you're asking me about okay. that. Okay. To- about it? Totally false. We, we, uh, th- there's so many things in Star Wars that are totally false. Okay. No, no, it was, it was literally a thing of scheduling. We we met and we were, he he wanted to talk and get, get together at some point to talk about our characters and I was totally down I and um and, and then he kind of left you know when our schedules were not on the same page so it really was just a matter of scheduling it wasn't because I wanted to stay in character I I you know I love Mark I was not gonna like I mean my God it's... turn down a dinner with Mark to talk about a character that would be <laughs> that would be crazy okay so yeah. I'm glad we're clearing that so, oh yeah, up. yeah 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 what that's... else you want to clear up like maybe... <laughs> is there anything else oh yeah well, maybe maybe all we'll right see what uh, I... well here's another one uh, true or false you took home your costume and lightsaber from the last Jedi when you filmed when you finished filming true that's true I have all that is that next to the Air Jordans uh, <laughs> no different different I have like different a office and okay. I have with all this st- you know similar to what you have here yeah, I have all the, I steal shit from or steal <laughs> stuff from movies <laughs> I, I don't and then I go you. and I pray to myself when I, no, uh, okay, very, good. <laughs> very good was it an immediate yes when you were offered for Kylo Ren no 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 no, I wanted to think about it. It was when we were shooting girls, okay. and I was a fan of the. I was a fan of Star Wars, and I didn't not, want it to right? be bad. Okay, and and there was no script to read. That was that was part of the gig. You 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 could get the part, but then uh, after you agreed to do everything, then they put you in a tiny room and and allowed you to read the script for the first time. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Like like it's top secret? Is what yeah. you're saying? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, JJ walked me through what he wanted to do with the character, but you had to sign up and be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. So then once you once I did that, you know, we, I went to London to start for pre production. There was like there was a tiny room down the hall. You can go in there and read the script and. Uh, so I was reading it for the first time. And then you had to leave it there. Yeah, then you had to leave it there. Yeah. That was the first one. It's like top secret. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was massive. Massively. We had special uh, stuff and everything. But did you know <laughs> Did you know that at least you're, you're, you're playing Vader 2.0? Like, at least did you know that as yeah. conceptually? I did. Yeah, in? yeah. And I had an overall arc that he, in mind that he wanted to do, which, you know, then changed. But his idea was that... Almost the opposite journey of Vader, where Vader starts the most confident, the most, uh, you know, committed to the dark side. And by, you know, the um, the last movie, he's he's the most vulnerable and weak. And he yes. wanted to start at the opposite, where th- this character was the most confused and vulnerable. And by the end of the the three movies would be most committed to the dark side. So the, I tried to keep that arc in mind, regardless if that wound up not being the journey anyway because, <sighs> because it changed obviously yeah, as we well, were shooting y- yeah right right but i was still kind of focused on that when did it change uh, uh well with with ryan he took it into a different direction but still okay. it kind of still tracked with the character than the last one they, it, it changed okay in, into being you know uh, about them and the dyad and and things like that. And then again, so you and and, and kind of evolving into Ben Ben Solo. With, right. that, with, that was never part of it. That wasn't either. No, 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 no. Because well, Ben Solo, he was Ben Solo from the beginning, right. but it wasn't. It was never a version where we actually see Ben Solo when when I first signed up for it. Well, I mean, again, so you're a Star Wars guy, just like you know most everyone in the human race, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So what was it like for you, Adam Driver? When Harrison Ford's on the set, and you know you're about to do what you're about to do to Han Solo. Yeah. What was that like for you? Um, a lot of the first movie was denial. That it, I mean, those movies are action-adventure, sure. but in-between takes, they're pure comedy. 
you know, it, it's uh, stormtroopers trying to sit down. You know, it's like uh, people trying to look, uh, move around and, and running into walls because they're wearing masks. Okay. And, you know, it's like <laughs> Chewy, like trying to eat, uh, you know, yogurt and lift up his. Uh, so I tried to like block out all of that. Right. But then there's so much uh, Star Wars iconography in Harrison Ford that you want to try to stay focused. But from what I remember that day was mostly about Harrison. Harrison was like. You know, it's it's seemingly from the outside was an emotional thing. It was a thing, you know, him and his son and me and our father and all that stuff was coming out in the scene. And I remember we were on this big catwalk that Mm -hmm. we were shooting it and we're just him and I and we're talking and he was like looking around and he goes, you know, look what we get to do. Isn't this so great? You know, and I, I was... You know, I, I would think that he would be cynical or over it, and it was the exact opposite. He was very emotional and open and... Uh, Just as about he was... Han Solo is about to eat it? This is what he's yeah, saying to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he was so excited to be... Like, he how lucky he was to be shooting this movie and, and this character and, uh, like, uh, how, how great filmmaking is. You know, it was it was very earnest and uncynical and... Uh, pretty, pretty great. You, I mean, he's, but you know, he's Indiana Jones. He's, know, he's the fugitive. I, yeah, you know, you, <laughs> he's uh, Doctor Richard Kimball. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah. you were kind of like the one-armed man in that instance. <laughs> it's With one a way of looking saber. at it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and then I licked him. <laughs> <laughs> Which is odd. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's, you know, that's, I got an the part. that's an approach. That's an approach. Yeah, yeah. That's an approach. <laughs> I mean, my gosh, that yeah. is unbelievable. But it is heavy. You know, it was, it was nerve-wracking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have people who like stare at you in real life? Like you, you, you did it. You, you killed Han Solo. Do you get people like pissed at you when you? No, okay. in, initial. Well, in the premiere, I was worried because people were watching it for the first time, and yeah. I, I was like, oh my god, they're gonna riot, and they're gonna be like, there yeah. he is, and yeah. you know, let let's get him. But it, it all was fine, and then. Like every, every one, less now, actually, I kind of said it recently that, the, the, but it's not really something that happens all the time. But right. for, a, for a while, a couple of years afterwards, like, why'd you kill Han Solo? It's like, like, I, like, I have no choice in this shit. You know, they asked me to be there and I <laughs> stabbed him and that was it. Uh, that was part of the script. Right. And then you but, moved on. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. But my, my memories of that were actually very nice. I mean, regardless of that, just stabbing him and, you know, him. Right. Falling down the shaft. Well, just a moment for me, if you don't mind. Um, you know, my daughter, Taylor, 10 years old, she was Kylo Ren for Halloween. Really? Uh, I wonder if you don't mind. What What do you think of the form here? Oh, great. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, very good. What do you think? Menacing? The form? Oh, yeah, what yeah. What do you think? The yeah, fo- it's a good angle. Okay. Right? The the saber, do you think it's uh, she's wielding it properly? I mean, uh, it's okay. She, you can be she, critical. No, it's she right. needs some gloves. Okay. She has kind of like a chewy there to the right. Yes, she does. <laughs> a real life one. I like, the, I like the shoes too. And a, <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. It's good. Yeah, it's not. It's not uh, totally flat because if someone was attacking from the, you know, you need a little uh, an angle, oh, you know, I, to kind of ricochet off the I other way. Didn't even think about. Oh yeah, that. if it was flat and then it would just uh, uh, when okay. you hit. I'm trying to come up with something. No, it's technical. okay. No, it's okay. It's great. She'll love it. Yeah, that. this is She'll great for him. Excellent. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. And last one: Is it true you wear the Kylo Ren mask while driving? Is that That's true? not true. No, no, no. Not, no, I have a couple masks. I have a couple okay. sabers. I have a blaster. I, I try to keep a lot of stuff from. Okay. The, from the set. Well, we're having a blast with you here. Thank you for coming out. Well, thanks for having me. Like That's we, it. We, That's I, it. Yeah. I mean, oh, wow. I've, you want to talk sports at all? You got no, I don't know. I don't, I've already know. done enough for the okay. Pacers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good enough. Um, and I do. Li- I mean, I do like Reggie Miller. I like him as a commentator. I, he, he, is, he is doing a very good job. Yeah. Oh, and then last player. one for you. Uh, great job on, on SNL. That ah, was thank fantastic. You. I had no thank idea you. you played the piano like that. Yeah. Number yeah, one. Yeah. And then you as the baby. A, yeah, uh, yeah. Was, autobiography. It was jarring, yeah. I'll be honest with you, <laughs> seeing you as a little baby on a plane. It's a little jarring. And then the uh, the chocolate skit, we're just going to have to leave there. <laughs> when they're pitching this stuff to you, is there, I mean, are you all in on whatever the ideas are? Do totally. you come up with your own? What do you got? No, I, no the monologue I I have opinions about, or we talk about that. But sure. All the, um, but the, you know, they, they the writers came up with the mo- most of that stuff. You just leave and all the, the skits, they, yeah, they... They ask you if you have any ideas, and I'm like, I got nothing. <laughs> and and every time they always come up with something really great, right? And weird and uh, interesting. One more, you get a robe. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be. I mean, 
You get the you get the the, the number five robe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And the jacket. That's gonna yeah. be great. Or is but, it a jacket or it looks like a robe to me? I, uh, no, is I it? think it's a jacket. Okay, but you might be right. It's a right. robe. Oh, well, you will have to know. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's some homework. I we we do need to see a photograph of these Air Jordans. We would love yes. to see. Oh that. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. No, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll connect with that. Yeah, uh, and then homework for everybody out there. Go see Ferrari um, in theaters nationwide on Christmas Day again. Uh, another revelatory performance by you, sir. Thank you very much. Huge fans Thank you. of yours here on this program. And you're welcome here anytime. Oh, I'll totally come back. Please, I appreciate great. that. That means a ton to us because we barely scratched the surface on uh, Celebrity True or False. Literally. Yeah, these no, five, I, I have so up... many things to correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we're here. We're here yeah. to help. We're here to help. There's an I in Rich and Eisen, but we're team players, Adam. Thanks for coming on here. Thanks for coming on right. here. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.